Welcome to In Her Voice. My name is Kelly Covert, and I am passionate about helping women live authentically by listening to their inner voice. Get ready to be inspired by women of all walks of life that have set aside their should be's and not good enough's and are standing in their true voice, the voice of wisdom that each and every one of us has inside. Hello, hello. I am so glad that you guys decided to join me today on In Her Voice. I have a really special guest. Her name is Sonia Shraddha Devi, and she is a feminine power coach. And she's going to talk with us today about how we can use sensuality, understanding our own sensuality, understanding our own feminine power and needs to help us serve. And I just love, love, love this topic because honestly, I think that that's what the world is about. I think that that's why we're here. We are here to serve. And if we can find ways to make that easier and to make it better and to make our lives feel more fulfilled because we are serving, then we should be doing that. It's not optional. We should be doing that. And Shraddha has so many wonderful ideas and suggestions and tips and just insight into this. You guys are really going to love her. And um, the interview, you when you when you listen to it, you may think, oh, there's a little bit of white noise. Um, she was in Bali when we did the interview and she is on the beach. (laughs) So you can hear the waves breaking in the background. It's beautiful. So remember when you hear that, that's the waves. Today's episode is brought to you by Beauty Counter, an amazing visionary company whose mission it is to get safer skincare and makeup into the hands of everyone, of everyone. And I am so excited to be a part of this company and to be bringing you these amazing products each and every week to help you to pamper yourself and also to support in her voice. And so this month is all about sharing and I have awesome things to share with you today. One of my favorite products that I use almost on a daily basis, I don't use it every single day, is the charcoal cleansing bar. And I don't know if you've been in any sort of beauty store or Target, you see that charcoal is all the rage. And what charcoal does is it really pulls out impurities and toxins out of your skin, out of your body. Did you know that you can even take charcoal, like activated charcoal as a supplement and that that helps you to detox? I think that's super cool. So this is a cleansing bar that has charcoal in it. It's black. It's super cool to look at. And I use it for my face probably four times a week or so. I don't use it every single day because my skin especially in the winter can get really, really dry. But sometimes I feel like, especially if I've just been sweaty at the gym or if I've been wearing a lot of makeup for a performance or something like that, I just need a little extra oomph in getting those toxins and impurities out. And especially at that time of the month when I tend to get a zit or two, I definitely use it then. I love, love, love it. And um, I just keep it in my shower and use it when I feel like I need it. And so I actually have about 15 samples of the charcoal bar that I want to send out to you guys. So this is totally free on me. I just want to give you guys a chance to try it, to see how it works for you. And then hopefully you will like it enough that you will want to treat yourself to getting the charcoal cleansing bar at kellycover.com backslash beauty. So if you would really like to try this out, I'm sharing them with you for free, no strings attached. Shoot me a message at kelly at kellycover.com and you can just put um, free sample in the subject line and then let me know that you want a sample of the charcoal cleansing bar and let me know where to send it and I will stick it in the mail to you. And I'm so happy to do that as long as my supplies last. So again, if you want to learn more about Beauty Counter and what it has to offer you, you can check out my link at kellycover.com backslash beauty. And of course, any questions you have about 
um, skincare, about safer skincare, about why I'm choosing to use Beauty Counter to support in her voice, please let me know by sending me an email at kelly at kellycover.com. So let's get on to our interview with Shraddha. I want to read her bio. Sonia Shraddha Devi, Intimacy and Empowerment Guide, Facilitator and Healer, empowers women to show up in their bodies, their sexuality, and their relationships in a powerful and feminine way and live their sensual truth. Based in Bali, Shraddha travels the world offering powerful group rituals and retreats, intimacy workshops, and empowerment sessions. Online, she shares potent but practical tools and keys which open the door to a whole new world of sensual embodiment, empowered sexuality, and conscious relationships. And like I already mentioned, what we're really focused on in this interview is practical ways to get in touch with that feminine power to understand and align with your sensuality and how that can fuel you in your service, in what you've been put on this earth to do. And that is a really, really powerful conversation because I know that each and every one of you has something to offer, that you are here for a reason. And if I can help you feel more energy in doing that and taking the inspired action, then that is amazing. And I really think that this conversation with Shraddha is going to move you forward in that way. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview. Shraddha, I'm so excited to welcome you to In Her Voice. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I feel it's, it's totally my pleasure. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. And if you guys hear a little bit of white noise in the background, Shraddha and I were talking before we started recording. She's at the beach in <laughs> Bali. <laughs> So you can just picture yourself sitting by the ocean with a warm sun on your face. It's like 30 degrees where I am right now. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually a, a completely pristinely beautiful morning. Just, yeah. So oh, you can imagine that you can imagine that the sun is dancing on the water and there's the mountains and the volcano behind us. And yeah, so that's beautiful. The, that's the setting. <laughs> Perfect. We couldn't have asked for a better setting for this conversation. So what we're going to be really exploring today is this connection between service, our service as women, our service as humans in this world, how we can be connecting and serving others and powering that, fueling that through our own feminine sensuality. And when you reached out to me with this topic, I was like, oh my God, yes, we have to talk about that. <laughs> but I want to kind of start with with your story and how you found yourself as someone who's guiding women through this process of, of finding and owning their own sensuality? Mm, sure. Well, like with many people's journey, it's, it, it, well, it's, it's a long journey and it has many uh, spirals and twists and turns. Um, I mean, I was always deeply fascinated by feminine power. Um, even when I was a child, I was just obsessed with, you know, witches and, you know, just, I was always quite fascinated by the feminine. And, and then also I was really not really guided or I didn't have many um, role models that really modeled, really modeled um, powerful examples of the feminine and also just women who are really, really happy and really enjoying their bodies and enjoying themselves. I wasn't really modeled that. Um, and so I had to go on a, on a big journey to kind of find that in myself. And uh, when I was uh, around 25, I mean, I'd, I had a few years I was doing yoga and I was, you know, I was moving more into my body and I, and I, I always danced a lot. Um, but I don't feel like I'd really, really dropped in yet. Um, mm -hmm. And around when I was 25, um, I, I was in a relationship. I wasn't, I wasn't really happy. Um, I wasn't listening to my inner voice that was telling me that I wasn't flourishing. And uh, so I got hit by a car. <laughs> like that was the way that the universe kind of like oh, wow. woke me up. And 
Yeah, that's something I wanted to share because it's really important that we listen because otherwise, you know, maybe life will give us a, a, a big slap, you know. So I really feel like that's what, that's what happened to me. Like I wasn't listening. I wasn't um, really honoring that the connection to my absolute depths and living from that. Um, and so, yeah, life kind of um, gave me a situation that, changed my life path and so I went to India which I'd always planned to do and I travel I'd already been traveling for quite a few years like I started when I was 18 but um when I got to India it was kind of like there was no longer any opportunity not to listen to my inner voice anymore you know there was that I could only really surrender to what was going on you know like what life circumstances were happening and and to basically just you know, surrender to the flow of what, what, what life was, you know, asking from me and where it was leading me. And where it really led me was from, you know, initially um, going to some yoga teachers, which were more conventional. Um, it then took me swiftly to some, some feminine yoga teachers, but women who were really um, embodying what it is to be really connected to their body, um, and kind of you could feel like a sexual hum in them, even if they weren't expressing it, even if they were the whole body's covered. In India, you have to be completely covered, but you could feel this fullness. You could feel this like all their, this whole body activation or something. You know, it was different. And there was also this like emphasis on just deeply accepting what is rather than trying to... Uh, get rid of your thoughts or be better in any way and I was deeply affected by that and I was really deeply affected by um, uh, an approach to yoga which was just so much more intuitive and flowing and so I got I got really obsessed with India and I actually spent about seven years not the whole time there but most of my time there and most of that time I was on my yoga mat just moving and feeling so I became really devoted to um, exploring my body and exploring what it feels like to, yeah, just be, to be guided from deep within um, rather than from my ideas and from my fears and my desire for validation and ideas about what I should do. Um, uh, well, so let me stop you there because I have yeah. a question about that. Sure. So you said before your accident, you weren't listening. And then you had your accident and you really were coming to this place where you had no choice but to surrender to the flow of your inner voice of, of what it was asking of you. And I wonder if you could describe to us physically how those two felt different. Because it seems to me like there would be a pretty marked difference, but I wonder if you could describe it. Mm, thanks for asking that. Yeah, I will. I would do my very best to describe it because, yeah, with these things, it's quite um, kind of subtle and energetic, isn't it? Yeah. So it can be difficult to describe it, but I think it's really, really important to to try. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, I would say that before I was really listening, that um, it was kind of a, I was more. I suppose like a, a big part of my awareness was shut down as in, you know, maybe my awareness was only on 25% of my reality and there was a whole, um, a whole aspect of my being that wasn't, um, yeah, wasn't within my awareness. Um, and then afterwards it's kind of feels like a, a, a sense of deep fullness, where, whereas like um, the guidance is coming from, is so, oh, actually it's kind of like life is guiding everything. So before I'd say it's kind of like um, a lot of kind of thinking, I suppose. Um, yeah. Most of the attention is on thought and um and then afterwards, when I was more dropped in, it's kind of like the awareness is like all through my being and it's like something so much deeper than my mind is guiding everything. And the mind is still, you know, you know the mind still talks and there's still, um, 
gifts from the mind, but it's there's it's almost yeah even even being able to feel your feet and f- just be able to f- be constantly aware of um, the lower part of your body is is another kind of aspect of it. So it's kind yeah, of like I'm I, sitting deeply in the the base of my body rather than being focused in my head. Yeah, like really grounded. Yeah, um, grounded is a way of putting it for sure. I I love I love that description, and and the reason that I ask you is because I think it's really important for us as women who want to be connected to that inner voice, who want to be connected to our feminine power, that we have to recognize what that feels like and what it doesn't feel like. Mm -hmm. Um, And both of those awarenesses I think are important because I think that even if we're, you know, only 25% open to that, we're still feeling it 25% of the time. And when we feel that we got to pay attention and we got to try to get back there as much as we can. Mm, and, so true. and so I appreciate you describing that because I think that sometimes we as women relate sort of this f- feeling of being unfulfilled, this sort of like restlessness or a sense of, you know, dissatisfaction, but not really able, being able to put our finger quite on it. That to me is sort of the, the words of how it feels to me when I'm not connected. Mm. And and if you can start to kind of connect the dots there, then you can start to understand how to be more aware, how to be more grounded, how to be more dropped in, as you say, all the time, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, but also if you can even notice that you're not dropped in, like that's actually huge. <laughs> like that's actually yeah. a big part of it because, you know, before that, you know, before I was dropped in as, as you know, as I could say, um, I wasn't aware that I was quite shut down. Like I wasn't, mm-hmm. I, I really wasn't aware of it at all. And so actually I had to go through a process of, um, yeah, seeing, uncovering um the spaces that I was avoiding through um through not being fully fully present with myself so I actually had to kind of go through a process of um seeing the ways that I like experiencing the um emotional content um that I was avoiding that that was hidden in that shutdownness and and also observing like getting really real with the ways that I was um constantly negative towards myself Um, I hadn't really noticed that before, but when I really began to spend time observing myself really deeply, I began to see that I was actually, um, I wasn't nice to myself in my mind. And, um, and I had to go through a process of like deep compassion of like, wow, look what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a real, that was a real wake up call. And it was painful actually to, to see that, but it was so important because then it gave me, it's, it's kind of like what you're saying. Once you notice you actually have some power to to make some change. Yeah. So fast forward, and now you are guiding other women through this same process that you went through. Yeah. You know, one thing that I know to be true for me in my own coaching is whenever I am experiencing something in my own life, that's an opportunity for me to learn and then to teach as well. But Mm -hmm. also when I'm going through the coaching process with my clients, I am still learning. I'm still uncovering. I'm still, you know, being surprised, like having aha moments. And so maybe you could share with us how that has evolved for you, how your understanding of your feminine power, your sacred energy has evolved as you've moved into guiding other women through it? Mm, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it, it was, it, it, there was many years from that time where I was deepening in my own exploration of feminine practices before I really, before I got the call, you know, I was, I was in Hawaii and it was just like, oh, I'm going to be wow, I'm going to be holding women's retreats and it's going to have something to do with sexuality. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Um, and then when I started to work with women more, because I had already, I was already a body worker and a, a yoga teacher, um, 
Yeah, I began to see that I was able to, the spaces that I was going to, I was able to kind of open up that space and invite women in to that space. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and began to see just how how easy it was in a way, how easy it is for women to entrain into that space. Um, It's so natural for women to be really sensual and really deeply connected it's very you know it's it's just their natural state and so what I've noticed is that as soon as the conditions are right a woman will just start unfolding and blossoming like that just that just happens naturally and um so I begin I've seen two things one is that it's actually very natural and women absolutely love it and I've also seen that there's yeah, obviously some really strong blocks in the collective feminine um, that really prevents them from being able to connect and trust that access. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's a combination of, of the two. And so, I'm yeah, I'm also constantly learning about um, where women are at collectively and what it is that's um, up for women that's blocking them from having that connection and the different kind of types of blocks as well. Mm. Well, so when our sensual power is blocked, what I feel like I hear you saying is that blocks everything else too. So that blocks our ability to move forward with full energy. It blocks our ability to love ourselves. And then I think as a result of that, to fully love others. It blocks our ability to 100% connect with people, Mm. which blocks our ability to serve. Mm. And I think that's one thing that's amazing about women is that our heart yearns to serve. Mm. And so can you talk about that relationship of our owning our sensuality and then how we get to use that in a way that is unexpected. Mm, wow, everything you just said was just so right on. Um, yeah. So when that 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 connection is activated, then we're like a living vessel for life to work through us. So actually, it's it's often unexpected what comes through, like surprising to us in like, wow, this is how my body wants to move right now. Oh, this is what wants to be created through me right now. Oh, wow. Um, oh, gosh, this is like what is needed in my relationship to, to shift. Um, yeah, it's like that, that deep well of wisdom with, within us and which is, I, I feel, just connected to all of life then begins to speak through and reveal itself through, through that connection. And yeah, so it's, 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 I think the main thing to say about it is that it's alive. It's really alive. And that me- and they, means that life is, you know, an interesting, fulfilling um, adventure in a way. Um, oh, I love that vision yeah. of, of like vitality. You know, it's like a heartbeat. Like you feel like when you dance really hard, you can feel your heartbeat throughout your whole body. It's that kind of feeling. Yeah. And, you know, the way things are happening is like, it's alive. It's like, you know, it's, um, yeah, rather than formulated and, um, yeah, something that you try try and have to make happen. It's something that is happening and you just need to keep on listening and cultivating and honoring and serving that. Yeah. So let's talk about the blocks because I'm sure that all of us, all of us, come up against them. And I don't know how old you are, Shraddha. I'm almost 44. And I really resonated with what you said about not really having um, a feminine role model that that modeled for me that connection to sensuality, that modeled to me that deep understanding of feminine power. And I think that a lot of my listeners are in the same boat. You know, it's almost like we're creating a new path Mm -hmm. for ourselves and for the next generation. So how do we, what are some of those blocks and what do we do about that? Mm. (laughs) Good question. So, um, 
one of the kind, one of the one of the blocks that um, I I really relate to personally is um, just being quite rigid and contracted. Um, so, like, if we're not in that flow, then it, it can be kind of frustrating, and then that brings up creates tension in the body and then that blocks the flow even more so mm -hmm. tension in the body creates more tension then creates tension in the mind it creates more tension in the body um and just more and more tension and contraction is created and then you can't you don't feel good in your body you don't feel in your flow and so you're that's a way that that's i mean that's a huge block and that's why physical practices are so important and energetic practices are so important because it's a way to um to unblock that tension and that contraction um and one one archetype i really relate to is the the really overly strong independent woman um mm. and i work with a, quite a few women who have that because you know you always attract people who who ha yeah got that a similar similar patterning um so that's definitely a block um being overly identified with being um independent and then unable to ask for support and receive support and be vulnerable <laughs> basically <laughs> um yeah. so yeah i work with that a lot you know i feel like my journey has been so much about basically moving into vulnerability and allowing myself to be soft allowing myself to be cracked open um yeah so yeah that's that's a big block um the, the kind of strong person who is avoiding vulnerability yeah i can totally relate to that too vulnerability has been a big part of my healing journey from being, you know, a overachieving perfectionist striver, you know, getting the gold star, the certificates, the pats on the back to really coming to a place where I don't need any of that anymore because I can give it to myself mm. and I don't need it from, you know, external sources. Um, but, you know, what, what can someone who does feel that rigidity, that does feel that tension and that need to be strong how do you how do you find your way through that how do you start to feel safe enough to mm. let down that mask so to speak mm. yeah i'm happy you said to feel safe enough because actually that's what it's all about um so to answer your question on one level i feel like the physical practices are really important because it's actually you know undoing the more physical aspects of that contraction and getting the energy flowing and when the energy is flowing then emotions start flowing more and you actually start to feel your emotions rather than ha mm -hmm. <clears throat> rather than having them like trapped inside your body um so that's a really important piece and then there's the piece of um really learning to cherish your little girl and this is this is something that i do this is a like an ongoing practice for me of like noticing when I um, have my mask on because I, I only put my mask on when I feel um, when I feel insecure when I feel threatened <clears throat> um, and so noticing when I've put on you know put on a mask and I've become defended and being like and and taking time to be with myself and be like, oh, I actually talk to myself and say, oh, wow, I see you're really finding this really hard right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, 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 this basically uh, um, bringing attention to what's going on and then bringing care and compassion and being there for the process because I feel like, um, you know, for most of us this wasn't, that kind of care and guidance wasn't, weren't given to us when we were growing up. It wasn't like our vulnerability was really nurtured and that we were really encouraged to go through the whole of our emotional process, you know, and transform it to the end and, you know, come back to connection with ourselves. I don't feel many of us really got that. I mean, um, I feel like my parents were great, but they didn't just didn't have that understanding of guiding me to be really intimate with my experience and to um, cultivate that kind of awareness and mm -hmm. ability to create safe space for myself. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like we're, re, we're bringing ourselves back. Yeah, it feels like we're um, retraining ourselves to, to be able to be with vulnerability. 
Yeah. And, you know, what I hear you saying is you have a deep practice of self compassion. Mm. And I loved, I don't know if you're familiar with Kristen Neff's work on self compassion. She has written a wonderful book about how to cultivate your own self compassion. But one of the things that really struck me in that book is she talked about actual things like um, wrapping your arms around yourself. Mm. And, and rubbing your arms up and down, like, like you're giving yourself a hug, like you would a child that was hurting mm. and saying, it's going to be okay. Mm. And it, like all of these things that you're saying, that's, that's what it's bringing to mind is just that we can practice self-compassion the way we feel compassion for our children or the way we feel compassion for people that are close to us. And that some people might think that that's weird but if that's what we need, that's what we need. Yeah, exactly. And actually that brings me to another block, which I, which I see that's really prevalent, um, which is the not feeling like you deserve the attention. Mm, um, yeah. Like, so it's this like deep sense of unworthiness and one way it reveals itself is like, oh, I don't deserve to, to have that attention and care. And, I mean, it seems like it's... Um, you know, a, a noble quality, but actually it's, it's more, more got like a bit of a martyr quality, you know, generally yeah. is like they're really deeply resenting the fact that no one's giving them any care. Um, and, but there's a resistance towards receiving the care because it's kind of confronting to have someone to have, have the attention on you. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, it's, I, I see this as a block, like I don't deserve it and yet I really want it. And so one, it's really powerful to be able to learn to um, receive that from yourself. And once you can receive that from yourself, then you can begin to receive that from others. And then you can begin to understand that it's not about you. It's actually like just what you said, like it actually works. <laughs> like it's, you know, it's good medicine. It helps us to relax and surrender and feel more connected and um, so as long as it works, it's a, it's a, it's really important to keep on doing it. Yeah, totally. And I, I love that you said that, that you have to learn to give it to yourself first before you're really able to fully step into receiving it from others. Mm. And, you know, I think we can't say that enough. We can't, mm. I talk about self-care a lot and my listeners know that. But I'm going to keep talking about it <laughs> because it's one of those things that we need to hear. Even people who practice it religiously, like me, I practice it and I still need to remind myself oh. all the time. Completely. I know it's like these words, self-love and self-care, and they're said a lot, but it's like it's so different when you actually start experiencing it. Then you're like, oh, okay, this is what it, oh, it's like... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm constantly actually experiencing deeper levels of that. And um, yeah, it really is a journey. Like, I'm not sure if it'll yeah, get to the point where we don't completely. need to do that anymore. But it seems that at this point where we're, where we're at collectively, the kind of collective wound that we've got needs a lot of babying, you know, a lot of really fine, tender, um, loving compassion. Yeah, yeah. So, Shraddha... What does your daily practice look like? How do you take care of yourourself now? Mm. Oh, that's so I, I love answering that question, even though it's uh well, I mean, my whole life is a, just a self care practice, basically. Like, you know, my whole life, I mean, I, I'm doing a lot more kind of work and I, you know, spend a lot of time in front of the screen these days because, you know, life wants me to create things and do things and offer things. But um, that's all just kind of couched in a, like just a big, long self-care procedure, basically, you know? Um, yeah. and what that looks like is connection to nature, um, doing my, you know, in the morning I wake up and, you know, make the space really beautiful, like energetically beautiful. I put flowers around. Um, I do my, I do my meditation. I do my practice. My practice always looks different. Um, like feminine practices are my thing. So I've got lots and lots of tools in my toolbox and I just use whatever feels right. But I would say that the things that are always in there is like some sitting meditation where I'm just opening my body to be in connection with, with, you know, the sky and the earth and, 
Um, and then there's always like a flowing element, some pra like practice of beautiful flowing movements, um, bringing the energy to my womb space, listening to my womb. Um, there's always a, you know, a period of the day when I'm really connecting with nature, um, either swimming, walking, um, and I'm just constantly coming back to that, you know. So, you know, I, I do get contracted behind the screen, like, and I unfortunately haven't quite figured out a way not to do that. But as soon, you know, I, as soon as I, I, I just have breaks all the time of just coming back to myself, movement, breathing, sighing, um, you know, laying on the earth. So I'm just, I'm just constantly bringing myself back and checking in with myself. And yeah, so it's like a, a like a, a constant practice of self connection and um, listening. Yeah, I love that because not everyone lives on the ocean in mm. Bali. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and some people, you know, have corporate jobs or, you know, they're with their kids all day or whatever absolutely. it is. Yeah. And you may feel that it's impossible for you to have a practice of daily self-care, of daily loving yourself. But what I would say is a practice is just that. It's it's moments. It's a breath here. It's a, an intention setting there. It's closing your eyes and breathing deeply in the smells that are around you. It's taking your dog for a walk. It doesn't have to look only one way and it doesn't have to Absolutely. be only one way. So I'm so glad to hear you say that because um, even in sort of paradise where this is your job, it's still something that you are mindful of that you're always coming back to. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and you know, I've been a travel for a long time. I've, I've done my practice in all environments, you know, like even if yeah. it's a tree in a parking lot, you know, like you can find whatever nature you can get to and, and do it, you know, like as soon as I get to a city, I find the park that I'm going to do my thing at. And, you know, so yeah, you can just modify it. Um, but yeah, it is, it, for me, it's like essentially, you know, creating like a base level of connection and then keep on returning to it throughout the day. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, of course, everyone's, you know, so many people are busy, but it's, it's absolutely, usually it's an excuse when people are saying, oh, I haven't got time because everyone, it's, it's yeah, everyone's got time to take 10 minutes to connect with themselves in the morning and then just exactly like you said, like moments of keeping on coming back to that everyone's got that opportunity. Everyone's got that chance. Totally. Um, I, there's yeah. a quote and I know I'm going to butcher it and I can't remember who said it because I'm bad <laughs> at stuff like that. But it says, um, if you don't have time to meditate for five minutes, you need to meditate an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so you said you have a lot of tools in your toolbox. This is what you do. If you could recommend to my listeners, one of your favorite easy tools for having, creating that base level of connection, what would that be? Yeah, it would just be the simple sigh and sound and sense. So just like, oh, oh <laughs> yeah. noticing when you've gotten contracted and you're out of connection. Oh, so you sigh with the sound and then you take a few seconds to sense into your body. It's like, yeah, you can I do love that at that. any time. I do that throughout the day. It's like, oh, I'm come back home again. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's something about the sound too. Yeah. Like, there's definitely something about oh, the sound. Oh, yes. It seems, it's sensual. It's very sensual sound. Yeah, it is. It act, it, you come, it, it creates a vibration throughout your body. And it also comes back like, I notice that if I'm contracted, the first thing that goes is my ability to make noises. <laughs> so if I'm happy, like I make noises all the time, just naturally. I'm sighing, I'm humming, I'm singing, I'm, you know, um, mo um, yeah, just. And then if I'm contracted, I just, I just clam up. And so mm. it's like our throat is so easy to constrict when we're feeling contracted. So to open the throat is, um, is really, really powerful. And then just kind of opens up a, um, access into, into the whole body. Totally. Oh, I love that. And it's so easy and you can mm. just do it 
Anytime. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. That's wonderful. <laughs> so welcome. Shraddha, I just, I, I feel like we could keep going and going. And I just love this idea of connecting to deep within us, using the tool of loving ourselves to spur us on to have the courage to feel brave enough to listen to our inner voice, to what it's asking us to do so we can serve at our highest level. And if people would like to connect more deeply with you, how might they do that? Hmm. You can go to my website, sonyashradadevi.com. Um, I don't know whether when this is airing, but you know, on the 12th of February, I'm holding like a, a free uh, seven-day journey. Um, but yeah, if you even if it comes out after that, um, yeah, if they just get onto my website, find out about what I'm offering. I have lots of different um, offerings in my shop of like different meditations and different practice flows that you can practice along to. And I also have like a, I have some different programs as well, like, um, sexual activation and healing programs. Um, yeah, so there's, there's lots of, there's lots of things on offer there they can check out. Wonderful. This, so this episode airs on the 13th of February. So probably mm-hmm. people will still be able to jump in Yeah, sure. on yeah. that. So you guys, and I will put the link right in the show notes and in the podcast app. So whatever you're using on your phone to listen to this, there should be a live clickable link right there. So you can go check it out. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. So, any, any women who would like to join for that was so welcome. It'd be really great. Yeah. And actually, sounds the, the, great. Yeah. And so I give a different practice every day and I've already given like in the first day, which they'll miss, I give this, the, the sigh, sound and scent. So they've already got that tool. Oh, so we're ahead. We're yeah. overachieving <laughs> we're <on> already. Track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. So Shraddha, I always ask one last question to all of my guests and that is in your life right now, what is your inner voice saying to you or asking of you? In my life right now, my inner voice is asking me to go even deeper into trust and, mm. and to allow spaciousness um, and, the, and, the, and the kind of support that comes um, from out of nowhere and it's trusting that that's holding me the whole time. Oh, I love it. Trust is such an important practice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It has been such a joy to spend this time with you. I just want to honor and acknowledge your energy, your presence. I feel more awake and more alive than I have literally all day long. <laughs> I'm not kidding Beautiful. you. It's, you know, it's 7.45 PM here in, in the States. And I know it's in the morning there. And I'm just so thankful for this conversation that we've had. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I've really appreciated also like the way that you you totally get this and the way that you've worded it in such a clear way. So yeah, thank you for the, the work that you've done for yourself that you, you understand and embody this so fully. Thank you. And you guys that are listening, get your size going and you can let us know how it feels. So Shraddha, we will certainly be talking soon. Awesome. Have a beautiful evening. Oh my gosh. I just love that sighing exercise, exercise. I use that in quotation marks. <sighs> I've been doing it. I recorded the interview a couple of days ago and I've been really consciously inserting that throughout my day. And it is amazing and so, so easy. So I really hope that you guys will practice that and see how that really changes your perception of what's happening happening, and how in touch you are with your body and your power in any given moment. Um, the other thing that I really loved that she talked about was how we need to develop an awareness of what we need to give ourselves. This is so important, you guys, because oftentimes we have an awareness of what we need, but it feels like that needs to come from other people. And when we can figure out how to give that to ourselves, that doesn't mean that we can't receive it from other people. It just means that we don't have to have it 
in order to fulfill that need, that we can fill our own needs in that way. And that's a really powerful place to be. And that will give us energy. We're not depending on someone else to fill us up. We can fill ourselves up. So let me know what you guys thought about this interview with Shraddha. You can always shoot me an email at kelly at kellycovert.com. You can also connect with me in my favorite place on social media, Instagram. I'm at Kelly J Covert and I'm always sharing fun little posts and stories from my real life, um, including sock updates (laughs) from my (laughs) house where there always seems to be random socks laying everywhere. And of course, cute videos of uh, the adorable Piper and inspiration throughout the day. Remember that February is my month of sharing. That's my theme this month. Today, this week, I'm sharing with you samples of the Beauty Counter Charcoal Cleansing Bar. Shoot me an email if you would like to get your hands on one of those. Totally free, no strings attached. And also, I will turn it back to you. If you want to be a part of my February of sharing, remember that sharing is full circle. It's giving and receiving. And so, If you want to share any episodes that you've listened to, including this one with people that you feel that it will really resonate, you can shoot them a link. You can share a Facebook post that I've posted on them or post it on your Instagram. These are all great ways for you to share. And I am so grateful when you do that because it really does make a difference in how my podcast is reaching people. And also it just feels really good to me. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that. So as always, I want you guys to remember that you are here for a reason. You are listening to this podcast today for a reason. Dive into that. Think about what it is. What do you need to give to you in order to be full, in order to be energized, in order to fulfill your purpose on this earth because you do have a purpose. You are uniquely made and there is something that only you can bring each day as you walk this planet.